what we're working on and uh is on um <laughs> sorry and uh and then um i come i guess with two asks uh the the first one is kind of general if you uh think about people we should talk to if that reminds you of other approaches and other projects that are interesting and that we should look into um and um yeah if if you had to name two people that we should absolutely have on our scientific community um who you, do you think they should be and the second one is that we have a um, we're looking for a data scientist. So if you think of anyone uh, that could be a good match, that would be also great. Um, so quickly, uh, I'm Colleen, the co-founder of Mona that I created four years ago. Um, I'm an engineer by training and also an insomniac by training. So uh, really what I wanted to uh, do a project about sleep and, and the whole team is, is really uh, motivated whether for personal reason they had uh, a lot of issues with sleep as well or for other motivation uh, to, to to work on on sleep and how um, we can uh, improve bad sleep we are helped by a small scientific committee that so we want to increase as i was mentioning and other great people i uh, don't want to spend too much time on that but with all of that we think that today we live longer and long lives, but that is not really worth it if we don't live better. So we want to help people live better and in better health. And for us, it really starts with sleep. Um, sleep um, today affects a lot of people. It's 70% of, of people that have uh, sleep issues. And obviously, that has major e effect on how we feel, how we live uh, on the short term and also on the longer term with a lot of very um, damaging impact on our health, increasing the risk to develop serious diseases. And uh, because it's a huge issue, it's also a huge market. And on that market, we want to become the leader of natural solution, enhancing sleep. And uh, most specifically, how we want to do that is uh, we are actually the first one to use uh, temperature control. Um, so when we uh, started to uh, work on the project, we read a lot of medical studies, start working with doctors, and we re realized that temperature has a big impact on our health uh, and uh, on our um, sleep, sorry. So I don't know if you know that, and uh, but our body temperature uh, decreases at the beginning of the night in order to fall asleep. And we also need to uh, keep a low body temperature during the night to have a good sleep quality. So maybe you flip your pillow to the cool side when you can't sleep or uh, you put a foot out of the cover. We all have kind of a, a different gymnastic, but uh, the, bot the bottom line is the same, that we want to decrease our um, body temperature and then maintain it uh, low during the night. And so based on that, we've developed a solution which is going to track and understand the sleeping pattern and then regulate the temperature of the head and neck which is a major um, thermal regulation area for the body. Um, and it's gonna so act through a pillow pad that's gonna change in temperature based on uh, the person's needs. Um, we uh, now collected more than 250,000 uh, hours of sleep and we see uh, key drivers on uh, how the our product is affecting people differently and what are really the, the drivers that um, are important in how you use temperature uh, in order to incre uh, increase sleep uh, so especially uh, of quite obviously but the role of gender or uh, the, the age but also bmi the external temperature and all kind of parameters that we want to uh, included in, in, in our products to have the maximum efficiency. And, uh, and our, our data uh, main challenges are uh, the output is to, ha to have the best temperature profile for uh, the person. So, and we know it's going to be different from one person to the other. Um, so the output is an optimal temperature profile for a, a specific person. And we do that by first clustering users and having uh, learning uh, for each user um, to have the yeah the, the 
I guess, um, different method, we can come back to that. Uh, and we also have a sleep detection uh, algorithm. Um, so those are uh, some of our current uh, challenges in, in the data and there's uh, really a lot we can do. Uh, sleep is a young science uh, as neuroscience, I guess in general, there is still a lot to learn, a lot to understand. And so we're also creating that science and, and that link between temperature and sleep, which is partly completely obvious to all doctors and scientists, but still uh, not that studied and not that leveraged. Um, yeah, and so, so I think we're really creating a new pattern using temperature and uh, data to uh, improve sleep and that also has a potential to tackle uh, disease of this century. Uh, even uh, more than sleep, we're di discovering a lot of diseases that have impact on thermoregulation and we see that our products is really a help to the, those people. And um, um, yeah, I guess putting that out there, uh, do you have any questions? Do you have any ideas, suggestions? Um, it's kind of what I feel prepared. Well, I know somebody has a question. Somebody raised their hand, no? Well, I can I can ask. So just just to check. So is the is it uh, sensors in the pillow, or yeah? You know, what where 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 are the sensors? Where are you collecting data? Um, yeah. So let me put that actually back. Um, so we are tracking uh, the movement of the person in the night through sensors in the pillow. Okay. And we all, we also have uh, temperature and humidity in the room as well as the right. um, ambient light. Okay. Um, and it goes with an app, so we also get a lot of very useful data through the app, obviously. Sure. And, and um, so, and it's from the pod. It, it's just it's just the kind of like the climate, the the room climate. It's not, um, there's no um, uh, uh, microphone or. So we, we're acting on the temperature of the pillow pad. So the, the product has uh, two parts, okay. one that goes into the pillow and there's gonna change in, in temperature throughout the night. Sure. Uh, thanks to the pod that you put uh, on the bedside table. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just, a question? yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just the, that that's uh, okay. No, 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 I gotcha. Um, I mean, su super interesting. I, I, we just happened to, uh, there's a group of us uh, going through uh, Candell's neuroscience book, and we just read the chapter uh, for sleep last week. So it's only, only because of that that I know about the, the, the temperature dip. <laughs> uh, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, Interesting. So, I mean, I know that, um, uh, you know, I know that like why things I think makes uh, a pad um, that more goes, you know, is more like an activity tracker, right? Yeah. Um, um, you know, so it would be kind of like, you know, generally you'd place it kind of like where your torso is, um, uh, uh, you know, underneath your torso and you're just catching the person's, you know, movement, essentially, right? Um, and I, I guess you, you haven't, uh, you haven't looked at any of the sleep EEG devices? Um, so our, our focus is, is really on having the best impact possible rather than the best sensor possible, sure. which often comes hand to hand. <laughs> Um, sure. But yeah, but, I mean, I was yeah, just wondering, yeah. You know, just a, as a researcher, it, I mean, it's super interesting to, to, uh, I mean, I, I would want to know, you know, if if the if your how the sleep EEG, you know, which which very very well defines, uh, you know, even in Kendall's neuroscience book, you know. Uh, EEG is what defines the sleep periods, right? 
and yeah. and you know your your hypnogram is is based off of of sleep scoring and um uh although together together with muscle tone you know and and eye movements right so it's these these three it's like eeg eog emg right and yeah. uh, I, I mean you know just because because temperature is kind of new to me in terms of tracking that I'm super interested to know how those other things are changing with this, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, totally. And um, uh, and it's 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 some um, studies that are planned. Yeah, that were supposed to start in April, so you can understand that. Sure, 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 sure. But sure. Um, yeah, for now, we've in our studies we've not used the EEG. We've not we've used the non. Sure. Uh, intrusive uh, sensors, sure. which are less, um, as you mentioned, they are. I mean, they are less um, accurate, but at least they are not invasive. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I get it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's. I, I, I mean, in a sleep lab, do they? Uh, would they track temperature in a sleep lab? Um, so they, they control it. Um, if it depends how advanced the, the, the clinic is, uh, they, they control it, but it's not that accurate, and they don't really play with it, which I was uh, very surprised to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they more make sure that it doesn't go out of a range, rather than really trying to control it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, thank you. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. Go ahead. No, speak, speak, speak. Go ahead. Uh, uh, just a silly question uh, on the um, 11th slide. What does uh, BMI uh, mean? Means? Uh, it's a body max index. C'est uh, l'IMC en français. Okay. Okay. What we saw, for instance, uh, is as we can imagine, uh, the the higher BMI, the um, cooler the product has to be. So. Um, uh, okay. Right. Right. Sure. Uh, uh, just to want to ask a, a quick question on the on the. On the data science side of things, uh, uh, or data scientist uh, role in this process, uh, could you give some more uh, idea about it, please? Uh, information about it. You, you mean the position? Uh, yes. How does uh, a data scientist help you guys in this project, or can help, uh, or would be able? Um, you, uh, yeah. So th there is. Um... A lot we want to do is the data to make sure we have exactly the right temperature at the right moment in the night. Um, because we're all different when it comes to sleep and when it comes to temperature. And we really see it in the data right now. People are using it, uh, are using the product differently. And, uh, and that's some, uh, something that is also um, known. Uh, there are some differences. And, and, and we're also finding a lot more that makes sense and that we want to have time to understand and, 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 and use. Um, so it, w it would be to, um, I mean, the output, one of the output of the work is to have the right temperature profile. And that goes right now by um, a clustering on the user and then on having a machine learning algorithm to learn what is the right uh, setting for a person in the cluster. And another part is to uh, make progress on the um, the science and all the clinical study that we want to do with goal to publish uh, the results. Um, so that's two things. And the, the data scientists can also help on understanding our consumers and, and that will inform our roadmap. So the product roadmap and also in marketing who we should target and uh, and where we should go based on on the results. Okay, that's another question. 
Okay, uh, so so there are a lot of things actually you would like to derive from it, from the data science process or the machine learning process yeah. uh, as such. Uh, uh, but uh, in your study so far and in this exercise so far, or in this experiment so far, have you found a correlation with a particular uh, variable and where you think that like this is potentially where we need to uh, take it further, more exploration kind of thing like? Um, um, yeah, what do you mean? Okay. Uh, what I meant to say was that like, uh, so far uh, in this process, uh, have you found a good correlation with a particular variable, like uh, for the good sleep pattern of a particular person? Is it the BMI which is being correlated? Uh, they, they are something different, else. Yeah, there are different parameters that uh, are important. Uh, so I mentioned some of them: the the gender, the age, the BMI. Um, we have uh, a few other questions that are asking the in the survey that you filled the first time you used the product. So it's uh, it's a combination of. Uh, I mean, age age is obviously going to be something too, right? Yeah. Age toy and and um, we know that around the menopause, women have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, temperature issues, sleep issues. So um, one the the second clinical study that we've done was on women around the menopause for that reason. So it's uh, it's also like a, a period of life which is uh, especially interesting for women for us. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting observations on that one actually. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, if you could uh, remind remind me your your questions again at the end. Um, yeah, let me put the, that. The two. Uh, uh, so there are two asks. Um, yeah. uh, one is um, if you think of um, people we should talk to or, or similar approach that are being followed in other. Um, I guess spaces and that we should look into, mm -hmm. and um, if we could add the two best person in the world to our scientific committee, mm -hmm. would you think they should be based on our project? Uh, good questions, but I, I I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it's I'm very interested in learning more about sleep but uh the the sleep researchers that uh, that i'm familiar with are either you know ones ones that have written books or ones that are doing brain imaging studies which you know uh i don't know if is necessarily what you uh, uh what you're looking for um I'm I'm reading a, a French magazine. Uh, it's about dream. They speak about the the work on the MIT Media Lab on the, on dream, and so yeah. maybe they have some input about uh, sleep as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's just uh, I you know these are these are like old classic sleep books, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, if these PIs are still still around, um, uh, but I mean, I you know certainly the the thermoregulation and and like you were saying, like the the interaction with with age and um, and hormones, which of course can also some, somewhat relate to BMI. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just not familiar with those those particular scientists, but I mean I think it's a it's a fast you know a really important area, and um, you know one of the things that I I certainly pointed out to the the group last week, you know it, it's interesting reading the Candell you know neuroscience book. Um, 
they talk a lot about the sleep, the sleep pattern changes from early life, you know, from infant to kind of, you know, adults sleep patterns. Um, but there's no, there's no talk of the end of life sleep kind of pattern degeneration. Um, and, uh, and just like you point out in the slides, like these are th those sleep pattern problems uh, end up being incredibly uh, predictive of neurological issues in, in yeah, totally. later life, you know? Um, and actually, there are a lot of neuro um, uh, disease affect the neurosystem that have uh, as one of the causes uh, to have uh, thermoregulation issues yeah like schizophrenia uh, people yeah. sweat a lot and yeah. that kind of thing so it's all the more interesting yeah 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 i, I mean and, and again you know um yeah i mean these these could also be behind you know one of the things that they talk about in that is that of course this is this is how you spend like hopefully a good third of your life, right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and, so and certainly tracking that, you know, and and if it, you know ignoring it and not not tracking it uh, uh, doesn't isn't going to make you healthier. <laughs> uh, if you find that it is a, an issue, or if you've got you know comorbidities that are contributing to that sleep problem um yeah. then yeah and um it could definitely explain a lot of the other you know when they talk about um you know weight issues uh becoming neurological issues perhaps i mean i'm just speculating but you know perhaps sleep issues are some of the you know some of the problem um uh Yeah. I, I, I don't know who those science advisors would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, my we, yeah. <laughs> last slide is, is to say, as um, uh, Romain nicely mentioned in the uh, invite for today's school, uh, that we're looking for a data scientist with a lot on our plates, as you can see. Um, so if anyone is interested or if you think of anyone that could be a good fit, uh, please uh, reach out to me. So, um, you know the um, the Paris Machine Learning Applications Group. Uh, so since since Sebastian's not here, um, let me. <laughs> uh, uh, so Sebastian Treger uh, might might point you to that uh, machine learning uh, applications group uh, as you know, because I think you you've certainly you've got data that they would be interested in too. Um, and uh, that definitely gives you a good a good group that are well. Do you care where they're located? Uh, no, we don't. Okay. My, my co-founder is actually in China, and I'm not in Paris anymore for now. So uh, right. yeah. No. And uh, you know, post post COVID, at least you know whatever whatever we thought of a year ago doesn't necessarily hold true. I know, and yeah, me first. I mean, study with me, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, and okay, so, so in our application group. Yeah, the machine. I mean, I, I I know that if I was in Paris, that that's like that's the that's the other meetup that I go to. Um, okay. It's great people, uh, Igor Caron, uh, or Caron, and um, yes, and uh, there's a couple more. Um, I'm forgetting their names, but I, I know Igor because of Nuit Blanche is the compressed sensing blog that he is, if you will, more famous for, <laughs> or more generally known in in neuroimaging, uh, uh, where compressed sensing is is um, such an important application. Um, and of course, he, he's he's also. Um, He's a principal at LightOn, which is which we just talked about last week with with respect to optical computing. Um, uh, anyway, but they run it. They run a really great uh, machine learning group in Paris, and they've got lots of uh, 
lots of potential people there. Um, yeah, I, I tried to find some. Uh, I knew a lab uh, work on on sleep uh, in Paris as well, or around the in the region. But uh, for now, I didn't reach it. And I send you some links on info in the chat, uh, Colin, if you if you want. And there's always the Neurotech X job board too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, which I can tell you that Roma, yeah, Hans and I, we we do not get paid for that. So <laughs> yeah. that. But, but, um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I would love to hear more about how the research goes. Because uh, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, fully. Uh, and and I, you know, I would still you know, love to see what uh, people using this who are also wearing a sleep EEG would show. <laughs> So there's some really nice, there's some really nice ones, you know, Muse S now, uh, Philips, yeah. I think makes one. Um, is, is Philips still selling that one? Um, I'm, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Huh. It's interesting that I only see that in the US. Any more questions? Uh, got links inside. Yeah, the last one is in French. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for the links. Welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the uh, principles of neuroscience. Yeah. yeah. And chap chapter 51 is sleep. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I can say that it's, it's, it, it felt, it felt kind of dated, you know, and um, I know he's, I know he's, or at least, you know, the, the first author, Kandel, um, has a, a recent popular book called it's like the disordered mind um let me just see and let's see. Uh, yeah disordered mind and uh, and um which gets at the you know gets at kind of like the complex multi-dimensional issues, biological issues behind severe, you know, mental illness and and other neurological disorders. And so it's like he fully understands that sleep affects uh the you know as as you age <laughs> and that these become are, are associated with neurological problems. But if you read chapter, you know, read the sleep chapter in Principles of Neuroscience, it's like you know, the discussion ends at 25, you know, which is just rather yeah. um, uh, Thermoregulation properties as well change a lot with age and, and you kind of lose uh, your propension to thermoregulate uh, at the, uh, yeah. when you're older. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and 
Yeah, I mean, I, you know, that was one, it was an interesting part of being at, uh, in Adam Ghazali's lab at UCSF was focused on healthy aging. Um, but one of the, one of the, the ways of getting at that was what's changing when you're 30 or 40, <laughs> like, like, you know, I mean, certainly there's lots of studies where we'll take, you know, 80 year old people and compare them to 20 year old people. Um, but some of that is just so that you can, you can find significant differences so you can report them and, you know, you can get refunded, you know, get your grant uh, renewed. Uh, but looking in your thirties or forties and fifties, um, there's lots of changes happening. Um, and it, um, yeah, it, it's one of the reasons that you don't look at it is that it's hard, <laughs> and and it's and it's very multidimensional. Um, uh, so just looking at, I mean, I, I was looking at a very specific population of of women in their forties, fifties, sixties with Graves' disease, which you know is a thyroid problem, but it it was, you know, even with a severe thyroid problem there, it, it was actually very subtle, you know, a lot of the effects were very subtle. Um, and given that they were reporting cognitive effects, um, it would have been really interesting to have, you know, sleep trackers for them, you know, to, to like, some of the variability that we would see in this population. We, you know, we were doing all these biological measurements I mean, in terms of, you know, blood work and things like that, but, and that would just show, that would show quote normal, right? Uh, uh, I mean, the, the women in the program had to have normal thyroid levels, even, even though they were taking, you know, levothyroxine. Um, but, uh, but of course there could be lots more going on. Like what if, uh, you know, all the women that are reporting problems are also having sleep, you know, are basically sleep deprived, <laughs> like which is very likely. We get a lot of p uh, questions from people with uh, th thyroid issues, men as well. But I, don't know. I mean, uh, but it's, and that's so that I mean that's why I kind of honed in on that particular issue is that um, yeah, like like doesn't surprise me at all that there would be yeah. you know e e you know not that we would necessarily think it would become a sleep problem, but I could certainly imagine there being a thermoregulation problem, right? And it's just that we don't think of, you know, don't think of the, the, the consequences across all consciousness states, right? Which sleep, obviously. Um, yeah, so really interesting. Uh, I want I, I, I want more yeah is, is, are there so I know um, I mean I, I've been looking and we've talked about this this Temple University hospital data set again sorry to, to switch it back to EEG but uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of what we spend a lot of time talking about here at DuraTechX but uh, you know just in terms of um, in terms of looking at uh, EEG as, as a measure of, of brain health, right? Is like, um, you know, Massachusetts General Hospital has some, some recent papers, some great papers showing that if you do age prediction from EEG, you can basically identify people who, who should have follow-ups because their sleep, their sleep EEG is looking like an older person's, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so, I mean, it just begs the question, you know, I, I mean, I can just see so many interesting things from that in terms of like, well, how how are they sleeping? You know, those those people who are identifying as a, with a mismatch from their biological age from the EEG, um, uh, you know, what's their temperature cycle like associated with their sleep um, and, you know, and other other measures? Because, you know, again, like your muscle tone 
should be changing during sleep too, right? Um, and if it's not, then, I mean, that, that tells you something about what their brain is doing during sleep, uh, for sure. I'm and, not doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it, so anyway, so I've been very interested in what, what are the publicly available data sets for, for, um, for people to look at sleep scoring and, and, and this kind of, you know, can, can we do brain age estimation or, you know, can we, can we start learning brain age estimation from, from EG and potentially from even from these consumer devices? Um, yeah, not, not, not that many, uh, unfortunately. I know we, we looked pretty thoroughly three years ago. Uh, we yeah. haven't since, but uh, yeah. we, we had a group of students that was yeah, trying to find uh, yeah. data we could use, but yeah. I, 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 I was surprised that it was so hard, you yeah. know? I, I mean, so, um, you know, Boston, Boston is, is one of the places that I expected to see it because it's also where it's where the open source seizure data is. It's like the open source ICU data and things like that, but, but it's still pretty limited. Um, there's a, um, a Montreal, um, uh, I think it's called the Mass um, M A S S data set, um, and again, that just it's come up in papers recently, just in, in terms of people trying to do you know deep deep learning of EEG has become quite quite hot, <laughs> uh, uh, and you know I know, but, that, I know that Dream. Uh, the the sleep company I don't know if you know him uh, made sure. uh, a data set available um, oh, okay. in a Kaggle competition as well uh, at least but um, that's cool uh, I don't know if that's something you can still get that's the one with two E's right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, all right. do you know where they're based um, yeah in France oh okay. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We 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 need to get them <laughs> so I can see if they if they are willing to share data. Um, yeah, don't worry. Oh, I see. There's a there's a Kaggle competition. Yeah. Oh, it was from Dream. Interesting. Okay, well now, yeah. Uh, so that that's particularly interesting just because, you know, I mean, a typical sleep clinic will do the standard kind of like 20 channel EEG. I mean, may, maybe less, maybe less, but, um, uh, but this is using their, their headband. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I know that the um, I mean the only the only other data set that I know of is the one that um, uh, the the people at Institut Pasteur did with the um, what was it like a thousand and one nights. Um, but, oh, uh, yes, uh, with Guillaume Dumas, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's like with high density EEG, yeah. the, the same woman every night for, I think it was only 101 nights, right? <laughs> I don't remember, but uh, yes. Yeah. Better to find it. But that, that, that data set is, um, but it, it was very much, it was more focused on it was really focused on her dream. She was she was writing. I mean, she was saving like all these notes about her sleep. Um, but I don't think they were collecting a lot of physiological like other physiological signals. Um, yeah, I could check if they were at least checking the temperature. That that would be that'd be good. Um, 
I th I, did they put that on open neuro? I don't know. Um, anyway. So, uh, I mean, is there anything? I mean, are you just getting temperature from the from the pillow? I mean, obviously, the if the person moves, are you getting that activity? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're getting the movement and the temperature, and mm -hmm. and then we want to integrate with other sensors and other products that are getting more data and also activity data, and. Uh, yeah, there is way more data that we can integrate. Um, so do you do you have? I mean, when you say you can integrate with more, um, is that directly with sensors in your pod, or would that be like via via like data sets merging later, or you know, because like yeah, we both um, we're looking at sensors that we want to add in the product itself, uh, oh, okay. but. I, w I was mentioning uh, uh, more like through other health or sure. like platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I, I'm super impressed if you, you know, to join the um, community call, Open Humans community call, uh, you can see how many devices, uh, you know, are, are available. <laughs> um, and... It, it's hard to get real time info from some of them. Like, I mean, unless you used, unless you used, um, yeah, HealthKit or do you, does Access, does Apple make that access available real time? I don't think so. Um, I actually don't know. Um. The um, uh, last, last Thursday, we had the woman from Mindex on. That's this um, uh, kind of like a spatial computing company, um, and they're they're using like an optical sensor for for kind of like BCI for not gaming, but like those kinds of gaming applications where you're like trying to control the computer with with your brain activity. But but the company before that she was working with a. a was was the a research kit Apple Health device? You know, Apple Watch Health device, um, and I really wanted to ask her more questions about that, like in terms of how do you get? Yeah, but I, I think that was I think that was you know part of a larger study with Johns Hopkins. Um, I, I I feel like you you need you know you need big numbers to get access to the to the watch um, but what what open humans will do is gives you a, an app that you can install on your phone and then you can download your your apple watch data um, so you could merge it afterwards in terms of the um, you could get you know the heart heart rate variability and other other measures that actually apple Apple does more of at night because you're not moving your wrist. And those are, you know, the, um, yeah. Anyway, th those, those, those would be really interesting to, to, Sorry. yeah. You know, um, anyway, it, it, I find that it, going to open humans and looking at all the devices they support is, is where, how I can learn about a lot of more wearable companies, <laughs> in terms of like there's there's a lot of uh a lot of platforms that uh that i think would be interesting to merge you know even if it's at a pro kind of prototype stage and um and, and you said you're you're so you're based all over your co-founders in china yeah Okay, but it's coming back. Okay. We spent the quarantine and <laughs> and okay. more. Yeah. Went for a short trip and then got got stuck. Yeah, he actually chose to go there. Okay, in, in Hong Kong, not not mainland China, but sure. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I mean, it was, it was, was hardware development there? Um, we're producing there. So okay. the hardware development was uh, partly done in France. And then we did a program uh, in Shenzhen, uh, which was, which is called Hacks, uh, which is the biggest uh, hardware uh, accelerator in the world. And uh, so cool. we spent uh, uh, five months there with the whole team and, okay. uh, and we finished product development there. That's awesome. Um, that, that would be really interesting to hear more about. Uh, now, I, I think I saw from your from your slides, you were in Singapore. For, yeah. Yeah. For a couple of years or uh, just one year, just, just one year. OK. Yeah. Uh, was that useful in terms of getting making contacts in Asia and uh, yeah. Um, the program, the program that we did um, is a um, it's it's a famous accelerator. It's okay. they are based between Shenzhen and San Francisco, and so they have good connections, and that was super useful to, um, yeah, to understand uh, the ecosystem and and uh, and to find a connection there. Um, not so so much what I did in in uh, in Singapore, but it was okay. still useful and, and a great experience. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. I, I, the, um, yeah. All I've got is Bunny Wong's book. I don't know if you know the. Oh yeah, he, he was one of my mentors. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. And he, he I, I was at one of his talk, uh, to digital talk uh, last week actually. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like you know, his book is famous in terms of like, yeah, yeah. understanding the Shenzhen electronics market. <laughs> It's yeah, it's one of the first books that we did when we joined the program. So it was like, okay, I think it was a good thing that we we came and that we are getting help to understand the ecosystem. That's so, awesome. So uh, what was that called? Hacks? Hacks H A X. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, that that's awesome. Uh, I um yeah. Who knows when when Americans will be allowed to travel again. <laughs> I think I think yeah. the people in the world will be able to travel before we will. <laughs> um, but I, I've I've wanted to uh, you know I've wanted to go to Shenzhen just just because of his book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I've been to Hong Kong several times, but um, uh, all right. Well. The name of the guy who is a book. Uh, but funny, uh, yeah. So I mean, it's not his real first name, but uh, B U N N I E, as like, kind of like Bunny Rabbit. I don't know if that is yeah. But and then uh, H U A N G. Uh, the hardware hacker. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah. And yes. Um, Uh, yeah, it was like um, I think was it like wasn't his book itself like a Kickstarter project? I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I or you know, yeah. Indiegogo or Crowd, crowd Supply. <laughs> I think he would be more Crowd Supply. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna look it up now. But it, it, it so this this somewhat relates to this uh, this free eg. 32 boards that I, I was talking about earlier um, in that, yeah, I, I, I would, you know, I'd love to see how we could iterate on that design. Um, and that would be, that would be my go-to book in terms of improving components uh, um, and yeah.
Okay. So his first name is Andrew. <laughs> I should yes, uh, an American. Um, yeah. Is at least partly Chinese. Yeah. Uh, I think it's both. It's and on, apparently, apparently, he, is, uh, he's born in Michigan. Yeah, but he he could be you know American born Chinese and. Uh, yeah, I mean, but apparently he lives in Singapore now. <laughs> uh, and oh yeah, so I think it was yeah, is hacking the Xbox that I think got, <laughs> got <laughs> some fame too. Yeah, um, just like the uh, the the comma AI guy uh, who got famous for hacking the iPhone. <laughs> uh. Well, I am. Uh, don't know if, what what else are people tracking this week. Are you, are you guys following any of the conferences and or? other online uh, things this week? Not on my side. No? I it's miss the uh, NeuroTechX Gaming uh, conference. Okay. But uh, yeah. I try to, to catch out with the uh, YouTube uh, things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does that... that yeah, you know, it was it was interesting. It was I mean, it was a great set of of um, great set of talks. Um, you know, it, it's still super hard to to make a um, a really responsive BCI when you're talking at gaming speeds. You know, like and and you know making it accurate and responsive <laughs> at, at gaming speeds when, you know, gamers are the ones that are focused on using like wired equipment and, you know, like pushing frame rates, pushing, you know, all sorts of um, latencies that uh, just makes it, you know, it, it's very different than kind of like the assistive technology world where you know response response time itself isn't as much of a you know isn't as important as a, a design consideration um because you know in a sense you're you, you are including the person in the loop in, in terms of the cognitive control um this is really supposed to be like predictive and it, it's hard. <laughs> um, uh, I was just checking my. We are close to the um, 
change on local uh, part of the, the meetup. I don't know if there are some other French people who will join us today. <laughs>